Hi there, I'm Scott and this is Great Scott Knitting Dyes Yarn episode 11. Today I'll be dyeing two skeins of Dyer Supplier Bouncy Erin, which is a 100% superwash merino wool very bouncy, has a really great high twist to it. And I'm excited to um, have my first dyeing experience with this yarn. Um, today I'm going to be playing around with a technique of, I'm gonna call it sort of a blended technique of low immersion and um, hand painting sort of all together. I'm going to mix up some dyes and put them in squeeze bottles or some just condiment bottles and then use those bottles to apply the dye to the yarn. So let's get started. Today the dye we'll be using will be the Wilton's Color Right Concentrated Food Coloring. The colors that I'm going to be using and mixing into these beakers of water are pink, um, which is a, a really lovely bright pink, um, yellow, and blue. The great thing about these Wilton concentrated food colorings is that they are highly pigmented. I'm going to add about 10 drops of this food coloring to the water that I have in my measuring cups. I'm mixing this in about 300 milliliters of water. I like to test the color that I have created or how dark that color is by using a little paper towel and dipping it into the dye. This gives me a general sense of how that color will behave. I'm now going to transfer this dye from the measuring cups into my plastic condiment squeeze bottles. And then I'll be ready to apply the dye to the yarn. I've been soaking my yarn in um, about 12 cups of water with a quarter cup of vinegar added to it for I'd say about a half an hour. This will set the acid into my fiber so that the dye will adhere to the yarn. I'm arranging the yarn in this square dish on my stove um, in a slightly different pattern than what I've done in the past. Instead of doing a circle, I'm arranging it back and forth so that when I apply the dye, that dye will hit in different sections of the yarn than maybe just one long section. So it'll give it a, a more variegated look to it. I'm gonna start with applying my pink on one side It's all right if it drips into the into the middle there a little bit, as this is going to be a variegated skein of yarn. I'm also poking the tip of my bottle into the intersections of how this fiber is arranged to get a more even coverage on the bottom side. I'm now going to add blue to the opposite side of this skein of yarn, starting on the outside and then bring it over a little bit so that there's a good section. Again, I'm going to push the tip of the bottle deep into the fibers to get a more even coverage. I am doing this on the stove and I have turned on the heat so that as I'm adding liquid to this yarn, 
um, and it will start to heat and set that color into the fiber. That'll also help keep the dye from moving around too much. And then I'm going to place the yellow on the middle. My expectation is to minimize the amount of mixing, but I do expect to see some oranges and some greens result. And in fact, there's a little bit of that green starting to happen on the blue side as it spreads and reaches the, the blue section. I'm going to allow the um, yarn to sit and heat for a little bit to set the color where it is before I come and make some adjustments. As you can see, there's some seam starting to form. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust and add a little bit more pink. and a little bit more yellow to kind of bring that over and get rid of some of that uh, yarn that is yet undyed. And again, poking it into the middle for a bit more um, penetration and allowing that, that yellow and pink to, to join together a little bit to create a little bit of an orange section there and then I'll let it go ahead and set this color. It's been about 20 minutes and um, I'm going to now flip my yarn over and get some additional coverage on this flip side. Now, the yarn is really hot, so it's kind of um, a little bit challenging to handle. That's why I have the tongs but I'm going to try to arrange it so that the underside of the yarn is now on top and I can um, get some good coverage. So I'm just gonna finish arranging it so that those lighter sections um, I'll have some better access to. And then I'm going to come in with my dye squeeze bottles and add color to this side. One thing I will need to be careful of is now that there is some liquid in my pan, the possibility of the dye spreading and moving around a bit more is greater. So I do need to be aware of that and be a bit careful as I'm applying more liquid to my skein of yarn. So I've let the skein of yarn heat for another 20 minutes to set that color and all of that dye has absorbed into my skein of yarn. So I'm going to just let it sit here and completely cool off and then I can rinse it and dry it. I'm now going to mix my color for the second skein of yarn, which I'm going for a green color that um, isn't like overly bright. So I'm going to use, instead of just yellow, I'm going to use orange, which is technically yellow number six, and yellow with blue. So of the orange, I use three drops, the yellow, I use three drops, and the blue, I use three drops. So now I'll use my paper towel to check the color I've created because you know the dye looks really murky there and that's the color pretty much that I'm going for. It's green but it's not one of those bright in your face greens. So 
So in my dye bath, I have about um, six cups of water and two tablespoons of vinegar. And to that, I've added my dye. And so it is already hot at a, just right at, at a simmer. So now I'm going to get my yarn, which has been soaking in a vinegar water bath. I wrung out a lot of the water and I'm going to give the skein just a slight loose twist. Not to give it a lot of resist, but I do want this to be very tonal. So with the added amount of vinegar for acid, um, the hot dye bath, and the slight twist, there should be a good tonality. So it should strike some areas darker and others lighter. I'll let this sit for about 20 minutes and we'll come back and check it. I've let my yarn sit for about 20 minutes in this simmering dye bath and the color has absorbed and it does have a nice tonal green effect to it which is what I really was going for as the base of this yarn. Now is where I'm going to consider doing some layering of color. I have some leftover dye from the skein of yarn I just dyed. And what I think I'm going to do is layer some of that color over the top of this base of tonal green. I know that's going to do some different color effects as it blends. So I'm going to start with the pink and I'm just going to go around the outside and a little bit across the middle there. And I'm going to move the yarn just a little bit and let that pink absorb up into that yarn. I'm going to go ahead and pick it up here real quick. If I can get a hold of it without messing up the skein. There we go. And now I'm going to come in with my leftover yellow. There's not much of that left, so I'm just kind of just kind of squeeze that into areas around the outside, and then my leftover blue, which I'm just kind of just throw it all over the place here until it's all gone. Well, mostly gone. And let that just kind of sit for the next 20 minutes and we'll see how it comes out. It's been about 20 minutes and I'll do my little bowl test here. Um, it's hard to see on screen, but there is just the slightest hint of blue still left in that water. So I'm going to add a couple of tablespoons of vinegar to that dye bath, turn off the heat, and um, just let it set and finish absorbing the rest of this color and setting the dye.
Skein number one is cool and ready to be rinsed and it really does look lovely. I have my soak water here that has um, is basically a vinegar water bath. So um, because reds and pinks tend to bleed a little bit, I'm just going to do a quick dunk into my soak water to add that little bit of vinegar to help stave off any potential bleeding that may have occurred. Then I'm going to rinse my skein of yarn in some plain tap water to start with. This rinsing process really serves uh, a couple of purposes. Uh, number one, it helps get rid of any residual acids or undissolved or unabsorbed dye. And it also allows us to check for color fastness to see if there's any major bleeding going on. A little bit of bleeding isn't uncommon and can be acceptable, um, but a lot of bleeding you wouldn't want. So with just the initial rinse in tap water, it looks like our color is in the yarn and is color fast. So now I'm adding a little bit of clear dish soap to see if any bleeding occurs. And this will also help rinse out um, any additional vinegars that, and color that may not be absorbed. Oftentimes the addition of soap will cause bleeding to occur. But I would say this looks like there's not much, if any, color coming out of the yarn. So I feel very confident. Um, all I need to do now is finish rinsing the yarn. Probably a couple more times, just number one, to get the soap out and um, to uh, just make sure everything is good and clean. Then I'll set it out. Um, I'll wring out as much water as possible, probably using a towel, and then hang it to dry. My second skein of yarn is now cool as well, so I can begin rinsing. And wow, I really like how this is turning out. So I'm going to uh, start rinsing it in a bit of cool tap water to see if uh, we have color fastness and also to begin that process of rinsing out any residual dyes and the vinegar. I would say initially I am not seeing any color bleeding coming out of the yarn. Which that's really good. I'm very pleased. So now I'm going to add a little bit of dish soap, probably just about a dime size in my hand, and then um, rinse it out over my skein of yarn, and then um, do a just slight agitation. This is super wash wool, which um, is a can handle a little bit of uh, manhandling, but you still want to be gentle with it so that it uh, doesn't felt because if you get too crazy with it it will go ahead and uh, cause you problems. Um, it looks like there might be a slight bit of green dye coming out but it's not nah it's not bad at all. I'm gonna go ahead and finish rinsing this skein of yarn to get all of the soap out of it, hang it to dry, and then we'll look at the final results.
my skeins of yarn are now dry and wow, these are really pretty. With this first skein of yarn, I love how the way the yarn was laid out created a different type of dye pattern on the yarn. I love how the yellows are broken up around the skein of yarn and there are different sections of the blue and the pink that break all of it up. With the second skein of yarn, I love the tonal green base still there, but these hints of pinks, purples, teals, blues that are popping out with the overwash just make it so interesting. I have really enjoyed this dyeing experiment of doing this low immersion space dyeing with different colors and then taking a tonal base and overwashing it with other colors to get different shades and different types of colors. These two skeins of yarn are really beautiful and I can't wait to make use of them. I hope you have enjoyed watching me dye these two skeins of yarn. Um, this base is really great. I definitely want to get some more. Um, it takes up the dye really beautifully. Um, the yardage is a little light in only 170 yards, but man, it is so bouncy and pretty and soft. If you've enjoyed this video, please be sure to like it. And if you like the content that you see in this channel, um, go ahead and subscribe and then click the little bell icon to be informed when I upload new content. Thank you for watching and hey, go dye some yarn.